you had this kind of middle ground that was missing. And so we wanted to have something that was easy to shoot like a 6.5, but have the knockdown power of the Magnum calibers. And that's really kind of where uh, the mindset was, is we needed to have something in our arsenal that was a long range hunting cartridge. And, and that's what the 6.8 brought to us. It was something that's easy to shoot, not overwhelming like the big Magnums are, but has plenty of knockdown power. It's something that, that provides that long range energy. When you get out to five, six, seven, eight hundred yards, you know, we're not talking about, you know, advocating people hunt that, that kind of distance. This segment of DOD TV is brought to you by Winchester Firearms, the American legend. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Drury Outdoors 100% Wild Podcast, episode number 187. I am Tim Chelsvik. I am Matt Drury. And we have special guests. We got a full house today. Mm -hmm. From Winchester, we have Ben Frank. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> we got Rafe Nielsen. Oh. And from Drury Outdoors, one Mr. Mark Drury. Yes, sir. Hello from Iowa. <laughs> All right. So we're excited because these guys, we, you know, they kind of made it. The, the cool part about being in the industry is sometimes you get the inside track top on some new top secret stuff. Yeah. And uh, they, Winchester made us aware of uh, something new and big that they have coming out that was supposed to launch in January at the, at the SHOT Show. Supposed to. The, yeah. And uh, unfortunately, SHOT Show is canceled. Um, basically, everything we had to do in January is canceled. <laughs> yeah. It's and weird. And uh, so they wanted to get the word out there in a, a little bit of a different way. And so we're having the guys join us for a podcast today and introduce something big. Yeah. So Ben, uh, Rafe, you guys want to take it from here? I mean, this is this is really groundbreaking. Yeah. So 6.8 Western, um, that's, that's the new cartridge that introduced from Browning and Winchester. It's really the first time that we've done something like this where we've taken both of our brands and really got our heads together to develop something for the long range hunter and long range shooter. Um, like you said, the plan was really to do this in January, but with everything going on and then it got approved by Sammy here in September and there was a little chatter out there about, hey, what's this 6.8 Western all about? Um, and we knew that we'd immediately start getting questions similar to like what happened with the 350 Legend. And so um, we asked you guys if you could help us out to help answer some of those questions through this format. So hopefully we can we can answer a lot of folks' questions about what 6.8 Western is really all about. All right. So where do you want to start? Where's the jumping off point? It, it, you know, every time there's a new product, there's usually a problem that you're trying to find a solution to. Mm -hmm. So what, what, in, in you guys' mind was the, the problem here, so to speak, that you wanted to find a new solution for? Rafe, do you want to speak a little bit about how, you know, some of the conversations that we had had in the past about just what needed, what we thought we needed out there that was kind of missing? Yeah, of, of course. You know, there's a lot of new cartridges that are out there. Um, and kind of at the end of the day, it boils down to you, you had your choice of like the, the six fives, tremendously great cartridges um, and calibers, um, wildly accurate, very effective for uh, smaller size game, whitetail, antelope, uh, those, those types of things. And then you had to jump all the way to the big magnum calibers. You had to jump all the way to a $28 or a 300 PRC or even 300 Win Max. Uh, and so it always kind of lacked that middle ground area of a hunting caliber. And, and those six fives that are up there were also kind of developed more as target loads and, and, and target rounds and didn't really have hunting in mind when they started those things. And so you had this kind of middle ground that was missing. And so we wanted to have something that was easy to shoot like a six five, but have the knockdown power of the Magnum calibers. And that's really kind of where uh, the mindset was, is we needed to have something in our arsenal that was a long range hunting cartridge. And, and that's what the 6.8 brought to us. It was something that's easy to shoot, not overwhelming like the big magnums are, but has plenty of knockdown power. It's something that, that provides that long range energy. When you get out to five, six, seven, eight hundred 800 yards, you know, we're not talking about you know, advocating people on that, that kind of distance, but it does have the ability to reach out and have the energy transfer from that longer range areas that some of those smaller lighter weight calibers don't have. 
And that's where the, the beauty of the 6.8 comes in is that it has that long range energy out there uh, to really be effective for the long ranges as well as those bigger animals when you step up into elk and even in a moose and, and some of those other bigger animals, uh, big mule deer, big white tails, it has that energy to, to give them uh, what they need from, from that standpoint. So we really just need to find that middle ground between those lightweight, easy to shoot calibers and those heavy big magnums uh, that, that are a little too much for everyday hunter, we've kind of found that middle ground with that six, eight. So would you say that in this new cartridge, it's, it's, you know, you buy a gun and it can basically take care of all your needs, no matter what type of animal you're chasing in, in North America. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's the age old debate about like, what's the greatest overall cartridge or caliber that's out there. And, you know, you can run through a whole gamut of things. But in all honesty, this really does kind of check all the boxes. It's not too much for whitetails. Uh, it's not an overkill like you do with, with the 300 wind mag. You don't need all of that for a whitetail. Uh, so it's not an overkill on the whitetail side, but it's plenty of gun for, uh, for elk and for moose. We killed moose with it this year, caribou, plenty of elk with it. So it's got plenty of emphasis and a lot of um on the bigger animals. It's not overkill on, on some of the smaller game. And uh, so really, like, it's a bold statement to make to say this is probably the greatest <laughs> all around cartridge. Mm -hmm. But really, it kind of is. It really does check all those boxes. I'm going to put Rafe's name and his contact info for the, <laughs> the comment section all around on YouTube cartridge. here. <laughs> yeah, no one will have anything to say about that at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that'll go unscathed completely. But, you know, and, and over the course of time, this gets introduced and people get to use it. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to prove that to be relatively correct, of course, because, uh, you know, we've used it enough to know that it's, it's a pretty effective cartridge and uh, not only is it effective, but it's easy to shoot. And those are two big, two big boxes to check. And, uh, and we're really excited about it because it really does do a lot for everybody. Well, and behind that is like, what's the one best cartridge that, I mean, that's the, the, the perennial conversation. Part of that is, you know, guys would like to not have to purchase a bunch of different platforms for the different animals they're chasing. You want to get proficient with a gun and know it and swapping back and forth between guns is, can be kind of a hassle. So I could see why, why people want to get one platform that's going to be good for pretty much anything they're going to be chasing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I'll say something there too. You know, it, it's oftentimes difficult to, to find that. I mean, you know, many folks are looking for something like that, but you think about the other items that are out there today the other, and Rafe mentioned some of them, but you think about the six fives, sometimes the rub there is, you know, I'd really like a heavier bullet or, to, to Rafe's point on 300 wind mag, well, you know, a heavier bullet on six fives on say big game animals. And then you go into those 30 cal options. You're like, you know, that might be a little much for me. I don't necessarily need all that recoil. I don't need maybe that heavy as a gun to go out and shoot whitetail, but I do want something that I can go out and take um, on big game critters. And that in between area is kind of somewhere where we thought, and we noticed that it's like, look, you know, we need to find something that's heavy for caliber bullets high BC bullets that are going to retain that velocity and energy further down range, um, but can transcend between those two that, that truly can be something that folks are going to be confident in killing big game animals. And, and Ray's been speaking to it because we've, we've used it and it works, but it's the, how we got there, you know, it's those um, heavy for caliber bullets. So, you know, some of the questions we know we're going to get asked, well, what, what's the diameter of these bullets? These are 277 cal bullets. And historically those 277 cal bullets are loaded in things like 270 wind, 270 WSM. And usually those only go up to about 150 grains. Um, with 6.8 Western, we're able to load bullets that are longer, sleeker, and they're 165 to 175 grain bullets. So those are bullet weights that are historically seen only in 30 cal options. Um, and we're putting them into this 277 cal. And, and you know, and one thing that um, Rafe um, didn't mention, but it's also an awesome feature of the 6.8 Western is that it's in a short action. So um, Browning and Winchester, and I can let Ray speak a little more about the rifles, but um, is able to put the 6.8 Western in their short action frames, which um, just has some inherent accuracy um, improvements as it pertains to, say, longer cartridges. Um, and it's just quicker for cycling. 
So it, there's a lot of boxes that we checked here with the 6.8 Western that's perfect for, you know, that long range hunter, but again, works great for the whitetail hunter just about anywhere in the United States. And, and talk about trajectory. Is, 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 is it similar trajectory to the 6.5? Um, you know, the trajectory is going to be similar to say like um, 180 grain, 300 WSMs, 180 grain, 300 wind mags, mm -hmm. um, similar to uh, seven millimeter rem mag. Um, you're going to have similar trajectory as those um, historic Magnum cartridges with those heavyweight bullets. Um, what you will see as it compares to say like 6.5 Creedmoor is it's significantly more energy. I mean, it's like 60, 70% more energy at, wow. at 500 yards. It's, it's really not even close. Um, the 6.8 Western carries almost a thousand foot pounds of energy out to all the way a thousand yards. Jeez. So that's, that's, that's saying something. I mean, that's, that's a true um, big game performer, but also you got those bullets. So you start thinking about 6.5 PRC again, it's, it's a great cartridge. Um, it continues to grow as well, but about the heaviest you're going to get is about 142, 143 grain bullet. So for some, that's, you know, not enough for them to want to go out and use that on a, on a big game animal. Will it work? Certainly will. Plenty of people have killed elk with it. Um, but, you know, that 170, 165 to 175 grain bullet really kind of takes that question out of anyone's mind. So when you shoot this gun, what kind of recoil are we talking with the heavier grain bullet? And, the, you know, is it, what, what, you know, in comparison, what would it be compared to, I should say? Yeah, so you're going to have uh, less recoil than uh, 300 WSM, less recoil than 300 Win Mag. Um, it's going to be similar to, say, like a 7 millimeter Rim Mag. So um, certainly like the 6.5 Creedmoor is going to have much less recoil um, than the 6.8 Western, but it's pretty comfortable to shoot. I mean, it's it's not a 300 Win Mag in terms of its amount of recoil you're getting it's it's significantly and it's noticeably different than that so from from our crew mark's had the honor of 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 getting to test out the gun and 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 this new cartridge during the missouri uh rifle season firearm season mark what were your experiences with it well i represent the 68 midwestern so <laughs> yeah it, it really really is exactly what they're describing uh First of all, speaking to that question about recoil, I would compare it to a 270, uh, maybe a 20 gauge shotgun with a with a turkey load in it. Like it's it's very comfortable. Uh, you don't really recognize the recoil whatsoever. It's it's not going to prohibit anyone from shooting it. Um, and the just the overall power of the gun is unbelievable. We shot we shot 12 deer with it. Uh, we had some DMAP. Um, the DMAP program on my farm. So we had some, uh, you know, really big adult does we were trying to take out. We shot 12 with the six, eight Western. So a variety of distances from, you know, 20 yards out to uh, 300 yards. And the results were the same. They, uh, the bullet hits and they go down immediately. I, I was talking to Perry last night in the blind because I knew this podcast was coming up. And I said, how far collectively did all of those animals run? And we came up with 100 yards collectively. And that was across three deer. The rest of them all fell in place. And uh, one of them uh, that I shot at like 280, 290 yards, and, and I hit her back just a touch. But she still only ran 50 yards. And it was a clean liver shot. And she was down within 50. We had another one take about a 20 yard run and another one take about 10. Hmm. So the rest of them all fell exactly where we hit them. I mean, the, the power of the, of the load is just unbelievable. We were, we were shooting the uh, ballistic silver tip and we also shot the uh, expedition big game long range. Both of those were, they were incredible. I mean, I, I I've sent uh, Jason some texts about, I've never seen a, a whitetail rifle so powerful and, um, my hats off to you guys. You, you, you definitely produced the gun that I want to shoot going forward. Cause I, I've never seen anything like it. It was awesome. It, it, it sounds like a great, a great platform for a Midwestern guy that maybe has plans on going out West someday. And you know, they've got the money, they want to invest in something. So get something you can shoot here and now in your state. And then if you are able to make that Western trip, you've got something, you got the same You're gun covered. you can hunt with. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And, and, um, to Mark's point, you know, you know, it's, it's working on critters. I mean, we have taken it on our own, um, events with media and different folks 
And I think we've harvested well over 25 to 30 critters with it. Most of those are elk and mule deer. But as Rafe said, we've killed moose, we've killed caribou, um, pronghorn. Um, and we're talking long shots, not on purposely long, just it, it happened in, you know, it's interesting the way it worked out. But on some of these hunts, some of those were the, the best and um, only options that we had. So lots of shots over 300 yards, um, some out to even 700 yards, um, which is pretty amazing and with with awesome results. I mean, we're, we're shooting elk at 450 yards and they're stopping in their tracks. Um, and that's saying something because elk are pretty big, tough animals. So um, certainly we're very impressed with, even though we, we were the ones who worked on it, it's been pretty impressive to watch it in action. Um, and I think we're getting that same feedback from the folks, you know, who are on these hunts with us. And I, I can let Rafe speak to it because he's seen it work as well, but it's, it's worked out great so far. Yeah, we, we've heard nothing but, but great reports from everybody who's, who's taking this out. Uh, like I said, everything from Moose in Alaska. Uh, I know the caribou was killed at a, at a pretty decent range as well. Um, and as, as Ben said, there was some, uh, some white girls taking it, some, some long range stuff. Um, and a bunch of elk, I know it has gone down. There's been a lot uh, that, that was, has been taken with this so far. And every single report back, and again, we're, we know we're biased, as, as Ben said, but it has been just a tremendous uh, testimony on, on the effectiveness of the, of the cartridge. And, and it doesn't really, shouldn't really surprise us. We're, we're talking about ballistics in a, in a cartridge. It's, as I say, it's kind of matching the seven mag, uh, 300 wind mag. So, so you're hitting the ballistics right that's going to create that kind of effectiveness. And so we really shouldn't be surprised by that. What, what we really are getting at is that we're getting that kind of effectiveness in tighter, lighter weight platforms. So you're getting what you expect out of like a, a 300 wind mag and effectiveness of dropping animals in their tracks, a lot of damage, quick kills, all that kind of stuff you're looking for in that. We can't be surprised by that because that's what the ballistics are playing out. But what we are getting at that is in a smaller platform. So you're getting a gun that's easier to shoot, lighter recoil. I agree with, 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 uh, with Mark. I think it's much closer to a 270 than uh, even a seven mag. It's, it's very easy to shoot. Um, and as Ben said, the thing that on the firearm side that we're most impressed with and we really like is that we were able to get this into a short action platform. And that makes a big difference in, in how the gun performs just from the standpoint of that it's easier to use. You get those big long actions in you know, like a 30 out six or, or 300 wind mag, and it's a big long draw, they're a bigger gun. Um, and now we're able to put that in a short action platform. And that makes the, the draw a lot faster. You're able to cycle around easier. They're easier to carry. They're lighter weight rifles in general. And so you're getting, that's just what was great about this. You're getting all that high-end performance we've been talking about, the effectiveness of it. And you're just getting it into a platform that's lighter weight, easier to carry, easier to shoot, lighter recoil. Um, and, uh, and that's the piece that, especially from the firearm side, when we're building firearms. And we're figuring out, hey, how do we have to build this to make this easier to shoot? Because that's important. This cartridge really makes it easy for us to put into virtually every uh, model and variant that we have and, and have a really effective model to, to shoot. So the, the short action portion of this, the lightweight, the easy recoil, all of that is, uh, is coupled with this, this high energy, great ballistics. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're, really, we're, we've got a, a platform here that we're pretty proud of and, and expect this to be a, a pretty big success. Can you speak towards some of the technology that goes into, uh, you know, a new cartridge like this? What meaning, you know, what are some of the, have you guys created new processes or are there new developments or, you know, when you're going and testing this type of stuff, what are you doing that makes it such a different or revolutionary type of a cartridge for you? Well, you know, one of the things, particularly right now um, in this day and age of hunting and building new cartridges, new calibers and bullets, is this longer range shooting and hunting. And then also just the the uh, push towards longer, heavier bullets. And, um, you know, you go back to when the 270 win or the 270 WSM um, were created and the, the twist rates of rifles were designed around um, the bullets of the time. So shorter, um, lighter weight, um, they work great, but today, you know, with folks looking to shoot even further, um, whether it's steel or, Hey, I want to be able to confidently, 
um, kill critters at 500 yards. Um, you know, those longer, heavier bullets really help with that. And that's really, you know, you look back at some of the older cartridges, they just weren't designed around that. To be able to design something from the ground up that has tr twist rates that can stabilize these heavier, longer bullets um, is kind of where we started. And then you have to work on how do you make those bullets accurate? So high ballistic coefficient does not mean that it's going to be accurate. Um, you can make something long and heavy, doesn't mean that it's going to fly straight. So you have to work through all of that in terms of just bullet stability, um, you know, lots of testing to make sure that, you know, we worked with Nosler and we worked with Sierra to help build these bullets. Um, but, you know, we had to do a lot of testing to try to help ensure that out further down range that these things are going to maintain that accuracy. But, you know, historic 270, 270 WSM have a one in 10 twist typically on their barrels. Um, the barrels that um, the XPRs and the x bolts will be, the, the XPRs will be one in eight twist, so it's faster, as well as those uh, those x bolt rifles will be one in seven and a half, so even just a, a skosh faster than that, um, to really stabilize those 175 grain bullets on the Browning side. So we're, we're offering ammunition, and we'll be building ammunition and rifles both in Browning and Winchester. So going back to the beginning where we were working together, this is truly a, um, you know, both brands type of introduction and in play. You know, we've got the Winchester rifles coupled with the, the ammo that, that uh, Mark just showed off there, the Acubon 165 grain, as well as a ballistic silver tip 170 grain. But then on the Browning side of the house, we've got the mm -hmm. X-Bolt rifles with 175 grain long range pro hunter ammunition. So, um, but again, the, the faster twist rate. Um, then also we worked on throat dimensions. Um, you know, that's really kind of, looking at just all the little idiosyncrasies behind accuracy. So how could we make this thing the most accurate cartridge we could? You think about 300 Win Mag or seven millimeter, those are belted Magnums. They're not necessarily um, thought of as being, you know, inherently accurate. Like Rafe said, they're long action on um, that belt. They, uh, they shoulder, you know, they chamber off of that belt rather than off the shoulder, like the six, eight Western does. So looking at all those things of like, um, how can we best um, set this thing up for accuracy as well as um, terminal performance? Go ahead. And how, how about timeline? When can consumers expect to start seeing rifles hit the market and the ammunition? So we will start delivering ammunition and rifles. So the, um, and Rave can correct me on this on the rifle end, but um, our plan is again, as together, start delivering ammunition here in January and rifles in January. So we will have product out there, you know, maybe hopefully you get some Christmas money and you need to buy you a new rifle. Well, six, eight Western might be a pretty good, pretty good option for you. And then, you know, how many SKUs or, or you know, who all, who all will be able to make the gun for the six, eight Western? Do you guys have the exclusivity for a certain amount of period and then others will be able to make it? Or, you know, how many SKUs do you guys offer? Or what, you know, what can people expect when it does hit the shelves here? Well, from, from our standpoint, from the firearm side, uh, and, and to, to follow up with Vanya, we'll, we'll have the, the XPR from the Winchester side. Um, on the market here relatively quickly in, in January as well. Um, and then you'll see uh, the Model 70 on the windsurface side follow shortly after that. And then on the Browning side, you'll have the export. Um, and that will hit uh, in, in early spring as well. So, so shortly after that. Um, so availability will be here eminent and, uh, and you'll be able to go down the store and, and buy one. But from a standpoint of what's available, uh, right now you're going to find uh, your, your options on the firearm side in Winchester Essex. Uh, SXP and the uh, and the Model 70, and then on the Browning side will be in the X Bolt. And the nice part about that is because it's in a short action, we'll be able to, to chamber that in virtually every model that we currently make. So look through the cal uh, catalog for either one of those uh, brands, you'll find uh, all of those models that are out there. So on the X Bolt side, you have Pros and Max and Long Range and Hell's Canyon and Speed, and there's a whole pile of guns out there. They'll all be chambered in 6.8, same thing on the Winchester side, Model 70 and the Featherweight, the Sporter, um, all of those will, will come in that. And the same thing with the XPR. Um, all of those models will be available. So we're talking 
dozens upon dozens of options uh, in terms of the, the models available uh, to be able to pick this, this up. With. So, and then on the you know, side, Bank can speak to that, but I think there's uh, three or four different uh, ammo specs that they'll have out uh, here pretty shortly. Wow. Yeah, so we're we're working on um, some other things for mid year next year, but we're working on a lead free option. We're working on a match option as well. Um, you know, you you asked the question, Matt, like who will be able to um, build rifles for it, and who will be able to um, you know build ammunition? Well, it's approved by Sammy now, so really um, anyone can start building rifles and ammunition. Certainly, we'd love for everyone out there to be buying. Winchester or Browning rifles and Winchester and Browning ammo. And, you know, at least in the, in the beginning, that will be the case. And we hope that it stays that way, but we recognize that the six, eight Western is going to be something that, you know, we're hoping many people want to adopt. And just like with anything else that kind of takes off like that, I assume that as the years come, you'll see more people offering um, ammunition and rifles in six, eight Western. Hmm, very good. Wow. Sounds like I've got uh, something to do with my Christmas money. Now that you're a big gun hunter, Tim. I'm surprised no one's asked me any rifle hunting questions or wanting tips <laughs> because got, I pretty much one. know everything you about You probably could have used this out there in Oklahoma, those <laughs> yeah, longer range shots. No joke. Yeah. All right. So what are we missing anything, you know, uh, as far as maybe some of the frequently asked questions that people might have or have you guys encountered in some of the chatter that's already out there some of the questions that are popping up anything that we need to answer before before we kind of wrap things up you know one of the things that, that we are seeing a little bit is in that comparison of uh you know what this compares to i think it's really hard to uh you know and apples and oranges a lot of this stuff because it is a little bit different that's definitely but one of the things that we haven't talked about very often is the comparison to the 270 itself. So obviously it's the same bullet diameter as the 270 win and the 270 WSM. Um, and as Ben alluded to earlier, those were traditionally uh, in in the lower BC bullets and 140, 150 grain bullets, uh, 130 grain even uh, most of the time. So uh, the caliber itself um, and the parts of the 270 Traditionally, and if you go back to, to the old guys, to my dad and my grandpa and those guys, like 270 was a go-to round. And just at the end of the day, it just became a little outdated. It didn't have the bullet selection. Uh, just just didn't have that same uh, popularity um, as the new caliber started to pop up. But it didn't, never took away from the effectiveness of what a 270 was. Everybody loved the 270. Wildly effective caliber. And uh, it just kind of fell out of popularity just because of all the new the new uh, options coming out there. But you look at what this is, and we're now bringing back the 270, uh, the popularity of it, the bullet of it. And uh, it, it, that's one of the cool things is those who still have an affi uh, affiliation with, um, with the 270, we're bringing that back now in a more modern cartridge. And uh, and that's the one thing that we maybe overlooked in this story is that maybe we're going to look the, the hmm. traditional and popularity of the 270 itself. You're now we're now bringing back the 270 in a modern modern cartridge, modern bullets, higher BCs, and with that same effectiveness that everybody's traditionally really loved. And so sometimes maybe we overlook telling everybody this really is kind of a more a new 270 load. And uh, there's a lot of people who will kind of relate to that hmm. um, comparison than maybe to, to the new calibers as well. Making the 270 sexy again. Nice Tim. job. <laughs> All right. So energy, I know Ben, you talked a little bit about how compared to like the six, five, but are there other comparisons there that you guys want to throw out as far as, you know, I see here on the sheet, there's 19% more energy than the 270 WSM, uh, 150 grain AccuBond. Or what are some of the other ones that, that you guys would like to toss out there? Yeah, I mean, and, you know, we'll post at some point up on our website some of the frequently asked questions with some of these numbers. I'll just rattle off of a few things here. So there's and, and when you compare it. So like when we're looking at it, bullets that we're going to compare it to, um, certainly there's a lot of different options out there, particularly in 30 cal. You can go anywhere from 150 all the way up to 200 plus grains. Um, but we started to look at this from a big game perspective that historically 180 grain 30 cal bullets 
have probably taken more big game, you know, in terms of a bullet weight than, than just about anything else. So we're like, okay, how does this compare to that historic um, 180 grain bullet um, weight that you see in 30 cal? And when you do that in 300 wind mag, you're, you're, you have with the 6.8 Western, you have 6% more energy than 300 wind mag. Um, you've got 16% more energy than 6.5 PRC, but with 20 plus percent heavier weight bullets. So you not only have more energy than the PRC, and this is at 500 yards. So we were just using 500 yards as a, as a proximity. I mean, you could go, we could do these numbers at just about any range, but just to try to give folks a general feel of where this sits. Um, almost 20% more energy than seven millimeter REM mag, uh, around 20% more energy than 270 WSM, 150 grain. So when you're talking, again, those same bullets, you know, there's tons of different options. So, you know, we compared it to a 270, 150 grain, like we've been talking about, that's about as heavy as you can go with a 270 WSM or a 270, um, significantly more energy there. Um, and then it's it's not even close on 6.5 Creedmoor. It's almost 70% more energy at 500 yards. So, you know, you get that with that heavyweight bullet and that velocity retention that we're getting with these high ballistic coefficient bullets. And then recoil, you know, like we talked about, seven millimeter, very similar to that. But as Mark said and, and, and Rafe said, and I've shot it as well, it, it just doesn't seem um, nearly like a Magnum cartridge in terms of recoil. And, and another thing that in, you know, numerous people on these hunts have talked about is it doesn't seem as loud either. And I think that's attributed to a bit to um, the crack that you, you get with that reduced powder. It doesn't take as much powder and you can't really fit as much powder into these short action cartridges. Whereas like those Magnum cartridges, big, long, they hold a lot more powder. Um, they generate um, just a different kind of sound. And, you know, the sound of this thing i um, not going to say it's not loud. It's certainly loud, but it's, it's, there's a noticeable difference between it and some of the other Magnum cartridges, at least in, in my opinion. Um, and then recoil wise, like we said, 14% less recoil than 300 WSM and 16% less than 300 Win Mag. So that's how the numbers play out. Um, but it, it, nothing really be said for actually going out and shooting it like, like Mark and, and Rafe and myself who've shot it can attest to, um, it it does live up to all these things. It's certainly the numbers, um, are matching with, you know, real world results in terms of on your shoulder and on game. So have you guys, I, I, I'm sure you haven't, maybe you can send us some to add to the podcast here, but video of like the ballistic gel test is what, what is happening when it hits the body cavity and, and you know, what exactly happens inside there? Mark's talking, you know, how all these deer just about dropped Drop on him, down power. you know, that's, that's, I always find very interesting to see what it's doing once it hits that gel. Yeah, we actually have, and we'll get you guys some uh, some of that footage, but we did a bunch of gel testing with this, and we actually had um, some elk scapulas molded into these gel blocks mm. um, and then shot through the bone just to try to – we thought, okay, everybody shoots gel, but we got to prove that this thing is tough. You know, um, It's capable of doing what we're saying it needs to be able to do. And, I mean, we're shooting through – you know six, eight inches of gel, then hitting bone, then still traveling through the entire block. And you can see that the bullet is perfectly expanded, um, getting a ton of shock in that, in that gel block, but also um, has plenty of energy to really punch through the bone. I mean, it's splitting those, those uh, elk bones in half. Um, and, and those are big animals. Those are, you know, big barriers to try to overcome. Mm. And, you know, you can confidently shoot um, you know, an elk in the front shoulder at 500 yards and know that it's going to, it's going to bust through that shoulder. If not even punch through it's, it's other side shoulder, there's that much energy and that much capability with the six, eight Western. Sweet. <laughs> That's, I need a scapula bust in power. Yeah. So we'll, we'll try to get that footage and add it into the, the B roll here of the podcast. So, sure. hey, hey, Matt, here's a, here's one of the doe kills from this uh, deer season. Just, just check this out. Mark's B-rolling himself. <laughs> Holy oh, heck. <laughs> She's down. And that that was very typical of every one of them, you know, just a double lung shot and they just fall over. I mean, it, it was like that time and time again, even the one I hit back. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was downhill and went 50 yards and the 
the wound channels were incredible. And the thing that I noticed was the blood trails on the few that did run were profuse. And I think that was because the exit wounds were, were like that, where you don't often see that, but the exits were, were really large. I mean, it reminded me of like a rage broadhead exit or entry hole. Nice. So it's uh it's something, man, you know, that lack of recoil with that kind of type of knockdown power, it doesn't exist in anything else that I'm aware of. And the, the lack of recoil, the, the decreased recoil is important because you're not anticipate like you're not <laughs> for us <laughs> worried <minis. laughs> like this is going to kill my shoulder in just a second here you know there is something to be said for that because there's so many you know i i understand that there's a lot of proficient gun you know gurus out there that that go to the range and they shoot a it's, lot it's no big deal yeah but for the rest of us that pull the gun out the day before the season starts you know and you just want to check to make sure it's still on from last season mm -hmm. you might only shoot a handful you know of rounds before you go out and use it on the hunt and uh, you know, it, you're just not as used to, you know, the recoil, the shot. And you, you, if right. you're anticipating, that's just one more area that you could possibly have a little bit of error in, in the way that you, you know, the, you're aiming and, and the way mm -hmm. that you follow yep, through exactly. with it. And so, you know, you could... It, the recoil does make a big difference. We need the, all the help we yeah, can get. Yeah, for, for the rest of us. <laughs> no joke. Basically, well, Tim and I are talking to each other. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's all the real gun hunters oh, out no. there. It's no big deal. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of getting punched in the face. So, I mean, and I don't think most people are. So, it's like it, if you can make that more comfortable and you don't have to be sitting there thinking that, okay, here it comes. All, all you're focused on is the crosshairs and, and what that yep. critter is doing. That's what you want to be focused on. You don't want to be thinking in the back of your mind, okay, here it comes. And then <laughs> as you're pulling that trigger, because you're, you're going to inherently, you're going to make mistakes then, you know, you're going to, that trigger is going to pull the gun just enough to where, you know, it, it's not going to hit where you want it to hit. So yep. it's, it's certainly a, a, a bigger factor than I think most folks, you know, led on because certainly you can take the numbers and you can, we can make cartridges that have, you know, way more energy than this way more energy than some of the ones that are out there today but at, th at certain point it just becomes uncomfortable to shoot you know and this is comfortable and this is you know right in that wheelhouse where where it's like okay yeah i gotta have some recoil because i know this is going to be capable of killing mm -hmm. something at six seven hundred yards if, yeah. or you know have the energy to do that at least um you're not going to get that energy for free but how can we make that manageable yeah well and we yeah. should say go ahead oh, go ahead I'll just I'll establish from that standpoint is that that's one of the popularities of the 6.5 is that people could go out and shoot it. And it was easy for them to shoot and they could practice and, and they got good at it. Um, but if you stepped up to a, to another bigger cartridge, if you're shooting a 28 nozzle or a 300 or any of those other big ones, one, it's super expensive to shoot. And two, it's really hard on you. And so you're not going to go take it out and you're not going to run box after box after box through that gun get really proficient with it, know what the ranges are going to be, know what the drops are going to be at certain yardages. You just don't go and practice with those heavy car cartridges like you do with these lighter weight ones. And with that 6.8, you do have the ability now to have a gun that you can actually go out and practice and you can learn what this is going to do. You're going to learn how to shoot it. You're going to be able to, to stretch it out, find out what it does, and it's not going to kill you at the end of the day. And that's, that's super important for... Anybody shooting long range, whether that's target or for hunting, if you have to prepare for a Western hunt and you're going to go out West and hunt mule deer or antelope or elk, know that instead of shooting 150 yards across your bean field there in a whitetail, you're going to have to stretch it to, to 300 yards. And 300 yards for a lot of people is a long ways to shoot. Um, and, and for those of us out West, the 300 is pretty normal. And we, we have to stretch it on occasion beyond that. Uh, going out there and trying this and and putting it through the test and really practicing with it is super important. And being able to practice with the gun you're going to take in the field is even more important. And and that's what I noticed about it. We've had it out at the range. We took it out and did some film work on it. Ran it out to the huge yardages, way out to a thousand yards to so ring still. We went through several boxes of ammo one afternoon. Didn't think anything of it. Mm. Uh, we drove home that day nothing wrong with the shoulder didn't even think about shooting uh zero problem with it and and so having the ability to go and practice with the round that's going to be relatively inexpensive to shoot not going to kill you to go out and do that and it's easy to shoot will give you that practice and then the, one other thing i'll mention on recoil not only is it just easy on your body to do but it it helps in the shooting process that you're able to see your shot 
and you shoot those bigger, heavier magnums, you pull that trigger, that recoil bounces you off, you lose the animal in the scope, you don't see where the impact is at, you have a hard time getting back down on it, you got to have somebody with you to tell you what happened. Those are all things you don't think of, you know, until you're in the field, all of a sudden it's happened. When I shot, I shot an elk this year with it, I watched the impact of the scope. You don't get that very often with those bigger magnet calipers. And being able to, to sit down, find your animal in the scope, pull the trigger, watch the impact, mm-hmm. so you know where it hit, whether it was a good shot or not a good shot, whether you have to follow up on it. Um, that's what that lighter recoil does for you. Um, and what I found, you know, personally using the gun um, and that, that cartridge is that easy to shoot, you stay on target, you can watch your own impact. Uh, and from, from that standpoint, that's where I come back down to. Like, this seems like an ultimate cartridge for me because I'm, I'm able to shoot out with it. I'm able to shoot white with it. I'm able to shoot it all day long. I can practice with it. It's easy to use. I'm watching impacts through my scope. It, all, all the boxes on this, this cartridge kind of get checked for me on that standpoint just because it can be just that simple go-to cartridge every day for every animal. How much will a box of, of these shells end up costing you at retail? I know there's a couple different, there's three different versions you guys have, different grains, but about how much will it cost a guy? So retail is probably going to, and, and right now retail is tough to estimate because a little, you know, it's tough finding ammo and everyone's got things priced a little differently, but um, they should be around 37 to $40 a box. So um, kind of up there near Magnum prices. So like your, you know, 300 wind mag, um, th- those kinds of price points, 300 WSM, 270 WSM, that's similar retail that you'll find the 6.8 Western. Very good. Okay. Sounds good. Well, and we should say if if our viewers and listeners end up having some questions about this, you guys maybe hop back on and we'll uh, we'll take their questions. Yeah, leave the comment in the comment section, whether you're watching this on DeerCast or YouTube or social or wherever, and uh, we'll compile that stuff. And and just like we did on the 350 Legend podcast, yep. we had them on to introduce it, and then we did a follow up, you know, a few weeks or a month later, and and, and kind of jumped through some of the questions that that people were having. So. Sure. Uh, I think that'd be a, another great opportunity to do that with this, with this new cartridge. Yeah. Perfect. So, yeah. Well, we really appreciate you guys having us on and allowing us to do this. Um, we anticipate fully that there'll be a lot of questions, so bring them on and um, you guys just let us know when you want to do it again. Sounds good. All righty. Well, how about we shut this thing down? Let's do it. All right. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> ben, Rafe, Mark, thanks for hopping on, guys. We appreciate it. And thanks for thanks watching, for everybody. Us. All right. Until next so. time, peace out. We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV was brought to you by Winchester Repeating Arms.